Oh, hell no. those threads on reddit am i the a-hole well i'm a little bit obsessed so in today's video we're gonna switch things up and we're going to react to some of these threads and i guess eventually find out who's really the a-hole before we get into that make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to my channel i create content every week for your viewing pleasure don't forget to turn on the post notification bell so that you can be notified of more videos just like this my name is tandy now let's get into it Okay, so this first one says, am I the a-hole for telling my wife's dad he can't come to our wedding? Yikes. It says, I'm Jenna, age 32, female. And at my engagement dinner, my wife, Zoe, 34, female, made a toast to new beginnings. How cute. Everyone happily clinked drinks except for Zoe's father. He just sat there with his arms crossed, staring daggers at me. I looked at Zoe, but she was too busy talking to her brother. 20 minutes into the dinner, I overhear a conversation at the end of the table where we sat the older people like our parents and grandparents. I heard my mother say, excuse me? Then I heard Zoe's father say, it just isn't natural. Oh boy, we see where this is going. I asked what was going on and the whole end of the table got silent. Zoe's father said that he was happy for us, but he doesn't like that I'm a girl. I asked him, what did he mean by that? And he told me our whole engagement was a joke. He actually started to look around for some type of backup. I laughed and told him if he felt that way not to come to the wedding. He got very upset and told me I can't tell him what to do and he is going to go anyways. I put my foot down and said, no you're not. For years I had to sit and listen to him talk down on me and Zoe's relationship, but this time I wasn't letting it happen. But now I regret it because after the party, Zoe's mother told me that her family isn't attending the wedding because I told her husband he couldn't come. Now Zoe is extremely upset and has been crying since we got home. Am I the a-hole for uninviting him? <sighs> Hang on, we gotta... Ah. <laughs> Get ready for this one because this is a touchy subject. Okay, so here's my unsolicited opinion, right? I feel like, no, you're not the a-hole because... It's one thing to have your opinions, beliefs, whatever, right? But you know, as they say, opinions are like booty holes. Like we all have them. Doesn't make yours any more unique than the next person's. With that being said, I feel like her father was totally out of line because love is love. Love who you love. Get married to who you love. If you found somebody who you are willing to put up with for the rest of your life, you know what? Kudos to you, like that is a rare find i don't care if you're homosexual heterosexual whatever the sexuals of the sexualization of it all like i don't care i feel like he was totally in the wrong because he for one can have his belief but that doesn't mean that you have to speak on it how do you know what's good for me that's my opinion don't you get it? this is the thing like he said it in a setting where this was about celebration, love, joy, happiness, and he goes and brings his negative energy into saying, That ain't right. First of all, who said it ain't right? Right by whose standards? Yours? Because I'm pretty sure they're living their life, not yours, sir. So that kind of infuriates me because you're not the one giving your daughter happiness at the end of the day. Your daughter may get a sense of happiness from you, but it's never going to be like the happiness that you get from having a partner. And if your daughter found that partner that makes them truly happy and wants to spend the rest of their life with, then let them do that. And for you to try to say what is and isn't right for your daughter is really controlling and it ain't a good look. I don't know. Comment down below what you guys think about that. Is she the butthole or is her dad the butthole for this? I will also say too, now the family sticking with the dad saying, Oh, well, if dad can't come, then none of us are coming. I think that's a little bit much. But at the same time, like I can understand why her mom and family would have that reaction. At least her mom anyway, because I feel like she probably comes from that generation where, you know, the woman didn't really have much say or she was raised by that generation. So she kind of holds on to those beliefs. So she's going to stick by her man. And you know what? By all means, go ahead and do that. She doesn't want to cause any problems in her home. That's fine. If that's the, the lane that you want to go down, stand on that ten toes, okay? Because you can't be upset with Zoe if she decides to no longer speak with you guys. Like, it's a sticky 
sticky situation because I feel like the father is again being manipulative and controlling of the situation because did mom really come to this conclusion by herself or did dad say well if you go then you know that's the end of us or I'm not speaking to you or you know some childish like that. I feel like the family sticking by dad and not Zoe during this time where she needs the love and support of her family I think it speaks volumes and I think Zoe um if this truly is the person that you feel like you want to spend the rest of your life with then you know you may just have to do that without having the support and love of your family and I hate that for you but it just seems like that would be the most logical route to go down I don't know again comment below your thoughts in the comment section I'd love to hear you know different perspectives on this am I the a-hole for refusing to take my son to the ER Okay, I, a 61 year old male, recently took two of my sons, ages nine and 11, on a trip to my sister's house out of state. We were gone for a week. My wife, 43, stayed home with my daughters, ages 16 and 17. Three days before me and my sons headed home, my youngest, let's call him K, got to ride on my brother-in-law's, calling him R, four-wheeler. He had his own helmet we brought from home and we let him explore the 10 acres they had. Me and R headed inside to watch TV. About 10 minutes later, R mentions he doesn't hear the four-wheeler anymore. So we both headed outside only to hear my son screaming. We both started to run toward the screams, but I turned around and got R's truck. We found him at the back half of their property. When I got to them, R had already lifted the four-wheeler off of my son's leg and he refused to walk on it. I denied taking him to the hospital because my sister was a nurse and would be able to tell if it was broken or not when she got home in a few hours. Another reason I didn't take him to the hospital also has to do with the fact that my oldest daughter, 17, recently was in the ER with a sprained ankle and we found out we didn't have insurance. Yikes. I figured just waiting for my sister would be fine. If I needed to, I would take him to the hospital. I also pushed back our leaving date a day to hang out more with my sister. Our boys spoke to their mother that night and she got mad at me for not taking him to the hospital, saying there could have been other issues I couldn't see. We are home now and our son is walking perfectly fine, but my wife is still upset I never took him to the hospital. So am I the a-hole here? Ah, this is tricky because when you are somebody who does not have children, people with children feel like you have no say so in these types of situations with that being said I'm gonna give my opinion on the situation so I feel like as a child was in a similar situation to this yeah you are the a-hole I don't know that might be a controversial take again what if there was something there that you couldn't see what if he was bleeding internally and you couldn't even see it I mean granted thank goodness nothing severe happened but you can't deny the fact that this could have ended in a worse situation now, I don't think that the mom should uh, hold on to that grudge because, again, at the end of the day, the kids are safe. But I do think that having that conversation, first and foremost, and it seems like she did based off of the text, she explained to you why it wasn't okay that you did not initially just go ahead and take him to the hospital. I think once those feelings are put out there, okay, move on from it. You said your piece. Now it's time to, you know, move forward. But to go back to the original question, yeah, sorry. But I do, I think that he is the a-hole. Do you think that he's the a-hole for not taking his son to the ER? I mean, there could have been something seriously wrong. Maybe I just have a biased opinion because, like I said, I was kind of in a similar situation. So I used to play volleyball in high school. And I'll never forget, I had on... It was my own fault, but I had on these long, luxurious nails playing volleyball. Obviously, that is not a good look. You literally have to use your hands in volleyball, especially me being front row. I digress. So I had on these really long nails and I went to go and set the ball, but it bounced off of my long nails. Whereas if I didn't have those nails on, it probably would have, I don't know, hit the tips of my fingers. Who knows? Whatever but it ended up jamming my finger. And still to this day, I don't know if you guys can see, but this finger right here is still crooked to this day because my mom never took me to the hospital to get it pulled and fixed. And every time I look down at my finger and put a ring on it, because I have to kind of like jimmy the rings on that finger because it's crooked. And of course, jimmy them back off. I don't know, this one just hits a little different for me. So I feel like, no, you should have 
taking them to the ER. Again, there could be like long lasting effects, like i.e. my cricket ass finger that your child may suffer from and you don't even know because you never took them to the damn hospital because it doesn't sound like eventually you took them, you know, to the doctor. So mm, yeah, that's how I feel. Comment down below what you guys think. Do you think he's the a-hole for not taking his son to the doctor? Or do you think like, no, he had a sister that is a nurse. She was gonna check him out. It'd be all right. Controversial take here, again, from somebody who does not have children. Story number three, and this is gonna be the last story to you guys, okay? Am I the a-hole for leaving him on red after rejecting me? Ooh, spicy. It says, friends with benefits initiated our arrangement and told me to keep it a secret because he's paranoid about other women finding out. I assumed it was non-exclusive and started seeing another person casually for two months. Recently, I told my friends with benefits about my other relationship. He was enraged and started insulting me about how he despised women of my race. Since all his exes, they're also my race. Wait, he despises, but they're all... Okay. And even said how he wants to be in a relationship and that he's a jealous guy. After meeting, I felt really guilty and spent weeks thinking about what to do and how I felt. I decided to break things off with the other man and inform my friends with benefits that I'm open to something exclusive and serious, that is, if he is. He told me he wasn't looking for a relationship and said we can still be friends. I decided to leave him on scene and haven't replied since. Oh, hell no. It's given narcissism. Like he was all cool with everything while it was going the way that he wanted to. And once he found out that somebody else wanted you, then he's like, oh, mm, I don't like that. Let me reel her back in. And then once he was able to reel you back in, it's given. He was like, oh, I got her right where I wanted. So now let me discard her again. No, you don't need those types of games in your life, sis. You do not need those types of games. I cannot believe what I am hearing. How can you hear it? You don't have ears either. He is obviously a player. He's a manipulator. And you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Ditch him. Leave him on red. Actually, go ahead and block him. Actually. T. Block him. Block him. And I don't know. Maybe you can try to patch things up with the other guy. Or just, you know, move on. Take the L that it is. Find somebody else. Because, yeah, a homeboy, he ain't it. Especially when he has dated women of the same race as you? Like, what was that supposed to mean, bro? I'm confused. Like, mm, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Now, what Tandy would have done is, again, put him on block. And that's what I think you should do. So, no, I don't think that this person is the a-hole. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment down below on stories one, two, and three. Who do you think is the a-hole in this situation? If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you're the real MVP. And I just wanted to say thank you. You're really appreciated. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. It really helps push this video in the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe to my channel. But don't forget to turn on that post notification bell so that you can be notified of more videos like this. I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.